helping people cope with and overcome life's challenges. This is Life Transformations with Michael Hart, Certified Christian Counselor and Director of Ottawa's Elam Counseling Services. Hi, this is Michael Hart of Elam Counseling Services, and I want to thank you for joining us in this edition of the Life Transformation Radio Show. Yes, you're listening to the Life Transformation Show, a show where chains are broken and the lives are transformed. And this week, we'll be continuing the topic from last week, which is fatherhood wounds. And with me in studio today is Melissa Wagot. We'll be talking about fatherhood wounds. Welcome, Melissa. Hi, Michael. Thank you very much for being with us here again. And as I've said before, you're no longer like a guest. You're like a permanent host on the show here. I know. All the listeners can hear that. I've been promoted. Again, <laughs> it's good. I'm, I'm happy to be here with you, Michael. So one of these days, I'm going to be the one asking you questions and just get you to, to explore Ugh. these topics. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not yet. We'll leave it to you and your expertise. <laughs> All right, so you're listening to the Life Transformation Radio Show, and if you're not familiar with Elim Counseling Services, Elim is a Christian counseling service that provides Christian counseling from a professional counseling from a Christian perspective. You can find out more about us at elimcounselingministry.com, or you can call us at 613-699-1677. And today, uh, we are here on the, on the radio, we're discussing fatherhood wounds. And as a text last week, Melissa, we started out with the the passage from Second Samuel 14, verse 28 to 33. So to refresh the listeners uh, uh, as to what is involved in those texts, why don't you start by reading that and then we'll continue mm-hmm. our, our discussion from yeah, there. I would be happy to. And as we sort of uh, told the listeners last week, this is a story about King David, who many people I think identify as a strong man of God. But what, as we talked about last week, he lacked some um, key fatherhood skills and how he his interactions with Absalom led to some um, less than ideal circumstances to say the least. So the scripture we looked at last week is Second Samuel 14 verse 28 to 33 and starting in verse 28 we hear that Absalom lived for two years in Jerusalem without seeing the king's face. Then Absalom sent for Joab in order to send him to the king but Joab refused to come to him so he said, a, sent a second time, but he refused to come. Then he said to his servants, Look, Joab's field is next to mine, and he is barely there. So, I, so go and set it on fire. So Absalom's servant set the field on fire. Then Joab did go to Absalom's house, and he said to him, Why have your servants set my field on fire? Absalom said to Joab, Look, I sent word to you and said, Come here so I can send you to the king and ask, why have you sent me from Gesher? It would be better for me if I were still there. Now then I want to see the king's face, and if I'm guilty of anything, let him put me to death. Amen. So, so this is, uh, as we talked about last week, Absalom's desperate plea to get to see his dad. Yes. And we talked last week about the fact that he's not using the endearing term father. He's using the term the king. He wants to see the king. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so as we said, he was. we got a sense from the story that he was emotionally distant from his father because um, we talked about uh, last week as well the some different t- four kinds of fathers that are less than ideal. And um, David actually was showing symptoms of being an absent father. Five, five one being a good one <laughs> at yes, the end. Yes, four mm-hmm. not so good, one sort of good and... Um, we identified that through the story, David really showed that he was an absent father, and that led to Absalom being so desperate mm-hmm. to see his dad right. and having that emotional disconnect, as we said, and only being able to see him as a king and not as dad. Right, and we said also last week that it was a very sad story because if you read the rest of the, the development after chapter 14, you'll, you'll find that it actually ended up le- leading to Absalom revolting against his father and trying to take his, take his kingdom away from him to, 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 to overthrow him, and it actually ended up with Absalom getting killed. Mm-hmm. So I think what started out as, as disconnect on the part of King David and Absalom led to Absalom becoming bitter and actually trying to to overthrow his father because he didn't see him as a father. He didn't have this connection, this endearing connection, this connection that would lead him to feel that he loved his dad. And so we just saw him as a king and eventually mm-hmm. uh, out of bitterness wanted to to overthrow him. So last week we talked about the fact that David fit the category of an absent father 
because he was very, very absent in a lot of how he dealt with his family. I gave the example of how when uh, Amnon, one of David's son, raped his half-sister Tamar, that the, uh, although the Bible says that King David was very angry, we didn't hear anywhere of David taking any action to remedy this situation. Mm-hmm. And this led to Absalom taking matters in his own hand and led to Absalom killing Amnon, his brother, as a result, uh, because he was so angry at what uh, at what Amnon had done by raping his his, sis, his half sister, but even after that, we didn't hear of David intervening and mm-hmm. uh, speaking anything to Absalom or doing anything uh, about this this situation in his family. What happened as a result of that is that. Absalom was exiled from Jerusalem for three years, and in those three years, he had no contact with David. And so, when, where you read from in the scripture, it says he was in Jerusalem for two more years, and he didn't see the king's face. By this time, Absalom was now, now five years, gone five years without seeing his father, and the story speaks of a young man's desperation to connect with his dad, where he's saying, I want to see the king's face. And if I have done anything, if, the, if, if even if it means he's going to put me to death for what I have done, I want to see the king's face. And I think uh, there's a connection that we all seek with our fathers. The fathers hold a very important uh, position in the kingdom of God. And if you if you read uh, a lot of the, 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 the Bible stories about father, we see father was a source of blessing where father could pronounce blessing on the heads of their children. And so when there, there's this connection, there is not only the psychological damages, but the spiritual damage as well that we will get into later on this broadcast. So last week I covered uh, the five kinds of fathers, and I won't go into that. If you want to hear the, the, the show about about these five things in, in more detail, five kinds of fathers, you can listen to our podcast. It's on our website, and it's also on the CHRI website. So we talked about the absent father, the father who wasn't there physically or is there physically but is is so busy that they're in fact absent. And we talked about second kind of father we talked about is the emotionally detached father. That's the father that is present in body but does not connect with the kids. The father that is not at the kids' games does not show any interest in the in the children's life. We talk about the volatile father. That's the father who, for whatever reason, is very explosive in with their emotions. And then we talked about the, the super spiritual father, the father that is so spiritual that children begin to feel as if their religion is like a rope around their neck or like they're in a cage that they can that they need to escape from. And then we talked about the positive kind of father, the final kind, the fifth kind, which is a compassionate and caring father. So I think we that's where we wrapped up last mm-hmm. week when we talked about these these kind of uh, fathers. So in case you have just joined us, you're listening to the Life Transformation Radio Show. I am your host, Michael Hart of Elam Counseling Services, and with me in studio today is Melissa Wagat, and we're discussing fatherhood wounds. Thank mm-hmm. you for joining us. So as we've described um, the types of fathers in last week's show, um, as I said earlier, there's sort of four that weren't so great, Mm -hmm. and one that was more positive. But what are some of the factors that may stand in the way of someone becoming a good dad and becoming that caring and compassionate father? I think what what is very interesting is that fathers tend to repeat the cycle of how they were fathered themselves. So in a sense, in in many respects, for the negative types of fathers, it's like a generational curse. Mm Mm-hmm. For the compassionate father who grew up in a in a home where his dad showed him compassion and care, and he's now giving the same to his children, it's a blessing. But I I see uh, people will sometimes say to me, I can't believe that I did the same thing to my kids that was done to me as a child. I remember how much it hurt when my dad wasn't at my at my graduation or he wasn't at my soccer games. And now I am doing the same things to my children. So a lot of time, it's a, it's a, it's a predisposition based on the template that a person saw earlier on in life. So the pattern that they adopt from 
their their father uh sometimes there are mental health issues that stand in the way if you think about the volatile father for example there could be there could be a, a chemical imbalance there there could be some mental illness that causes this person to be to be volatile there are sometimes stress that a person is going through whether uh it could be in the workplace or stress from past things that have happened in life that they have not dealt with and so the family becomes the place where they they, they take out a lot of that frustration it's a safe place right because mm-hmm. they can't kick and scream at their boss at work so they, they it's a displaced uh, emotion where they come home and then they kick the dog and they're angry and volatile you know the least little thing triggers them off so those kind of things are are, are, are some of the reasons that stands in the way of, of people being being good fathers mm-hmm. And that's the thing. I don't think anyone sets out when they become a dad to say, I'm going to not be a good dad. Yes. So if someone's not had an example of what a quote unquote good dad is like, Uh what can they do? All right, that's a very good question. Let me let me let me say this uh, as, as a kind of clarification of what I've said before too. That sometimes not having a good father mm-hmm. can be a motivation, and sometimes mm. that works. Where there are some people, maybe someone listening to this show today, say, "Well, I grew up in a home where my dad wasn't there, and I am the most loving, caring father mm-hmm. that you could find." Well, that's true. There are sometimes when that can be a motivation where where someone says, I see this template from my childhood, I know how much it hurt, and I'm not going to repeat it. But if it's a case where you have you you have you are repeating a negative Mm-hmm. template i think first and foremost what is important is to make that connection if you can start by making that connection to say wow let me let me just realize here that i am doing the same things that i did to my kids sometimes that can be a motivation to begin to change the bible talks about knowing the truth and the truth setting you free and and there are times when having that realization is the first step towards change now once that that realization is made there are steps that need to be taken to identify the next step is to identify the unwanted behaviors so what are some of the things that i am doing that is destructive to my kids could be I'm not I'm the absent father I'm never there I don't spend times or or I'm the emotionally detached I couldn't care about my son's success in in his sport that he's playing or about the music that he likes I, I have no attachment to anything that he does if those things are are identified you know that second step of identifying the things that you want to change then you go to the third step of implementing a plan that can help you to change those steps. And I would say, when you make a plan as to what you want to change, then set realistic goals, Mm -hmm. right? If you are, if you're the father who are, you're never at a child's event and don't say to yourself, yes, I'm not going to be, you know, at every one of my kids' mm-hmm. event and I'm going to be there 24-7 and it's not, it's just not going to work. Set realistic goals. Okay, I'm going to make an attempt this week mm-hmm. to be at one of the games. Exactly. Or maybe if you're always home at 8 o'clock, one yeah. night a week, you're going to try to be home for supper. Absolutely. And make one family meal versus saying... I am a failure if I don't get all seven. <laughs> right, because sometimes people set these unrealistic goals and it's a kind of self-sabotage where they end up failing and then they stop trying because, yeah. wow, I tried what I failed. It, but if it, you set realistic goals, it's a motivation to do more. Mm-hmm. And if it's a case that you're an emotionally detached father was never said, I love you to your children, then make a goal of this, this one, once this week, I'm going to say, I love you to my daughter or to my son. Or once this week, I'm going to give a spontaneous hug. Don't become this huggy, huggy person <laughs> that, you know, you're hugging every five minutes because the kids are going to wonder the what's wrong with you. The other way. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to think you're strange, right? You're the overly that, attached yes, father. <laughs> yeah. Or they're going to run away because they're going to say, wow, what's wrong with dad? You exactly. know, he never hugs me and now he's hugged, oh, he's hugged me 10 times for today. So set realistic goals and try to to do that in, in little increments. Mm-hmm. So through these shows, we've talked a lot about dads. Um, but with every dad, becomes a child and Mm -hmm. in the the case of the story of king david the child in this story is absalom Mm -hmm. um and 
you've talked a little bit through some of our past discussions about how Absalom's actually a really great example of what the effects of absent fathers can be on children. What symptoms did Absalom show? Well, it, we, we see a lot of delinquency in Absalom's life. Like We, we see, uh, first of all, that, well, the blatant one is that he killed his brother. Yeah, that's a pretty big deal. <laughs> that's a pretty big deal. <laughs> pretty big deal. Right? But other than that, we see that Absalom as a young man were, were, were doing devious things, like when people would come to the city and would, would inquire for counsel, he would basically turn them against his father by saying, there's no one available mm-hmm. to hear your, your, your stories. Yeah. And wouldn't therefore, it be nice if I was here? Yeah, w- wouldn't it be nice if I was the king? So we see this kind yeah. of this kind of deviousness on, 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 the, on, the, on the part of Absalom. We also so see uh, that Absalom's story is a very good example of of what children do when they're not properly connected and attached, when they don't feel an emotional attachment to their father. We see Absalom setting Job's field on fire to get his dad's attention. Mm -hmm. And this is one thing that we don't realize uh, 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 among children, that sometimes the acting out, Mm -hmm. the bad grades, the shoplifting, the the fights that they're getting into, it's as if they're saying, hello, yep. dad, I need your attention. Hello, I'm screaming for attention. And any kind of attention is better than no attention. So this is basically, Absalom is a very good example of that because this is what he was saying from David, uh, of his father David. He said, even if David is going to kill me, I want to see his face. Mm-hmm. So in other words, even if it's bad attention that I'm going to get from him, I want to I want to see him. So there so the, the the acting out of your kids that you're seeing could be a way of saying dad I need you to be here. And even if it means that you're going to punish me and you're going to you you you're going to to treat me harshly for what I have done, I need your attention. I know that I might be speaking to to someone out there today you're you're in a family situation where you're seeing your children acting out and you realize that you have been less than an ideal dad. You have not been there. Uh, the purpose of this show is not to heap guilt on you. The purpose of this show is to give hope because if actions are taken to change your situation, then you can have a happy ending to your life story. It doesn't have to end up as Absalom did. There is still time available where you can reach out to your kids and you can take the steps necessary to connect with them to turn back some of those behavior. So so as I, as I was saying, Absalom uh, was showing delinquent behavior. Absalom is a typical example of the fact, or, or typifies, uh, the, or speaks to the fact that when children are seeking attention, even bad attention is better than no attention. Absalom said, even if my father kill me, I want to see his face. So you're listening to the Life Transformation Radio Show, and I'm your host, Michael Hart of Elam Counseling Services. You can reach us at 613-699-1677. Our website is Elim, E-L-I-M, as in man, counseling with two L's, ministry, that come and with me in studio today is the one and only Melissa Wagat. <laughs> We're going to have to do a show on ego later because mine's going to get really inflated being here with you, Michael. So we talked a little bit about some of the symptoms Absalom showed um, in the story that we read earlier, but um, is there any scientific research that speaks to the effect of fatherlessness or absent fathers on children? There, there are tons of research of that, actually. Let me, let me preface this by saying, I'm by no means here minimizing the importance of motherhood. I, I could, could do a show also mm-hmm. on motherhood at some point, but I'm just pointing to the fact that not having a, a child, a, a father in your life can have negative consequences. And let me also say here that there are wonderful single mothers out there who are doing great jobs mm-hmm. and great job with their kids, and they have wonderful family. This is not to take any of that, that away. This is just a point to the fact that there are tons of research that shows that that not having a father around is linked with a lot of negative consequences. You have asked me about scientific research. Uh, uh, let me point to a few here. There, There is one study that showed that father deprivation is a more reliable predictor of criminal activity than race, environment, or poverty. So father to deprive children are 72% of all teenage murderers. 
there are 60% of rapists. Just think about mm-hmm. that. Uh, there are 70% of the kids incarcerated are from fatherless family. They are twice as likely to quit school when a father is not involved. 80% of, of adolescents in psychiatric hospitals are fatherless. 90% of runaways are from homes where there are no, there are no fathers. Uh, there, there's also another study that showed that, that children reared in fatherless homes are more than twice, twice as likely to become male adolescents delinquent or teen mothers. And this is according to a, a new study by two economists at the University of California, Santa Barbara. So there, there are lots of other research that I could go into, but I, I don't have time to go into all of those. But you can look up these research. They're available online. There are lots of research that points to the f- fact that uh, not having a father is linked with a lot of negative, negative consequences. Mm-hmm. Do you ever see in your practice or in the readings you've done how... Um Having an absent father or a father that may fit some of those other father, less than ideal father uh, type characteristics, that it has a spiritual spiritual effect on children? And if so, what kind of spiritual effect do you see? That's a very good question because a lot of times we, 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 we tend to not look at that area because a lot of the studies don't necessarily go into the spiritual No, dimension. it's all sort of, it seems like a lot of physical lot or of economic physical, stuff yes, or yeah. socioeconomic right, things. Yeah, but one thing that studies do show is that uh, children who are from fatherless wounds, they also have a, a, a distorted view of authority. And when you think about it, God is an authority figure. It's true. It's true. And actually, when you think of God, we actually refer to him as our father. Absolutely. So when you say the Lord's Prayer and you're saying our father, if maybe if you don't have a, a, a great relationship with your dad or maybe not even a relationship at all, that's... That's a hard thing. Absolutely, and, and then it's hard to understand if you have if you you don't have a father who is loving, mm-hmm. and you you are trying to wrap your head around the concept of a loving, compassionate God, a, a lot of compassionate God as father. It's hard for for uh, some uh, children who have not had that kind of an example of a father to grasp that spiritual truth. So we know, we know that uh, it, it leads to a distorted, a distorted view of God. We also know that for, for homes where people are, are from families where, where the father, for example, is, is very, very uh, punitive and quick to judge and quick to condemn, they tend to see God in the same light. Mm-hmm. You know, why would God forgive me? I don't deserve forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I can't believe that God forgive me. I think I have, I have committed the unpardonable sin. A lot of times when people have these kind of spiritual beliefs, they are, uh, they, it would be surprising how much it parallels with the view that they have of their father. And I have a, 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 what I do in therapy sometimes, a, a procedure that I take people through, that I, I don't tell them that I'm making a comparison uh, with their father and God, but I listen to them talk, and then I draw two columns, and in 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 the the columns I I I have as the head God, and then I have as the other head of the other columns Father, and then I list all the things that are similar in their views of God and their Father. So, like for example, a person say, "Yeah, you know, my father was very judgmental, and then you know he 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 would you know everything." that we do wrong you would never let it go and he would and then they said you know i see god in that light god will not forgive me and make that connection and put the, a tick in both of those boxes and then they'll say something like oh yeah god i don't see how god could love me unconditionally i i i don't believe that uh, dad didn't love you conditionally either and they will say that at another point in the session i make those connections and then i present the list to them and i say what do you think look at this list everything that you have said about god you have also said about your father. Mm. And it's just like the light bulb goes on Mm -hmm. that their view of God has been distorted by the view of their father. And until they are healed from those, uh, those emotional wounds of their dad, they can never get to a point where they are going to see God in a different light. Mm Mm-hmm. So if someone's listening today, and maybe through our discussions, whether it's last week or this week, they've come to the realization that they haven't been showing the compassionate and caring traits of a father we talked about last week, and would like to change, and would like to take that next step so that they can become 
a good dad and maybe not repeat uh, the behaviors they've been modeled for in their own upbringing or mm-hmm. whatever. What advice would you give to them? What steps should they take next? Right. First of all, I, I think I, I said earlier that it's good to identify what what the behaviors are that they want to change. And But let me say this, that sometimes even when you have identified and you, you have now uh, implemented a strategy of change, it can be very hard to change some of these things because uh, if it was that simple to just change from being... Uh, uh, you know, let us say an absent father or a volatile father to being a compassionate and caring father, then everyone would just flip the switch once they listen to this show or they have heard something mm-hmm. that say that's not a good thing and it go, oh yes, you're right, I shouldn't be that, it's damaging to my kids, let me just change and be a compassionate and caring father. But it's not that easy because a lot of these things are very deep-rooted and one of the things that I think is very important, if you realize that you, you, you know what you want to do and you, you, you know what you should do and you want to do it, but you can't, then I think there is a need to get help. Mm-hmm. To, to help you to find why is it that you can't have an emotional connection with your children? Why is it that you can't hug? Why is it that you can't be involved in your kid's life? And a lot of times it's not because they don't have time. It's, 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 it's because there is something going on psychologically that stands in the way. What is interesting, as I, I think I talked about last week, is when we look at the first the first, the first verse of chapter fourteen, uh, uh, Second Samuel chapter fourteen, we see that the, the Bible tells us that David's heart was turned towards Absalom. In other words, he was longing for his son. Mm-hmm. So you would think that a, a person who, whose heart is longing for his son, uh, uh, after not seeing him for three years, would go back to him once he's back in the city. Exactly. It sort of makes sense. I want to see my I want to see my son. Let's go see my let's, son. Let's go see him. But that's not what we see in the story and I think I, for, I know from your experience and the things we've talked about fathers are experiencing those things maybe listening today where they've maybe not talked to their kids for a few years and they want to talk to them but picking up that phone or that next step right. there's just something in the there's way. There's something that stands in the way. And so we see in King David that a full 2 years passed and he did not go and see his son until his son had to set a field on fire before he would see him. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we have come to the end of today's show and we have to, to wrap up here. But let me say, if you are listening to this show and you realize that some of these things that we have talked about, some of these things are speaking to you, I'm saying, make that connection. Uh, some of you might be afraid. I haven't been around for so long. Maybe I'm going to be rejected. You don't know. Maybe God is also preparing the heart of your son or your daughter to reach out to you also. If you're in need of help, you can reach me at 613-699-1677. You can also find out more about us online at elimcounselingministry.com. And again, we want to thank you very much for listening to this edition of the Life Transformation Radio Show. Thank you very much for being with us again, Melissa. You're welcome, Michael. And until next time, I pray that God would bless you in all your relationships and keep you sound in mind and pure in heart. God bless you all and thank you for listening.